Good morning, everybody. My name is Fred Dodgers, and welcome to Fred Dodgers Conservative Corner. That's right. Actually, no, my name is Charlie Markham. I am a uh, former United States Marine Corps First Lieutenant. I was a scout sniper in the Marine Corps for four years of my 12 years. I also served in the uh, reserves for three years. I was injured in a, a helicopter accident in the late 80s in Nicaragua, and I uh, I had to learn how to walk again and uh, severe chronic pain sufferer and yada yada, um, but that is my background. Uh, I am from South Texas, uh, specifically Houston, Texas, uh, son of a Houston police officer and helicopter pilot and also a former Marine, and my mother was a school teacher. My parents are retired and uh, in their early 80s, and uh, we're a Christian family, and we have old-fashioned Southern values. And that's a problem because I live in the great Republic of New Yorkistan now. That's right. I uprooted my 10-year-old autistic son and we moved to New York, uh, ostensibly for help with my son's autism. And it's been a godsend because there has been an awful lot of help for my son here and he's making a lot of progress. So God bless these three teachers who are helping him so much and the handful of people here in social services who have helped us. But I have to be honest with you, as far as the rest of New York, the whole state can take a header into the uh, Hudson River as far as I'm concerned. I am a uh, South Texas conservative. I'm a constitutionalist and I'm a Second Amendment supporter all the way. And uh, being a Marine, uh, I call it like I see it. I don't uh, care if I ruffle people's feathers. I don't care if you agree with me or disagree with me. I do have some friends that are Democrats, but they're not screaming lefty liberals, so we get along fairly well. I would consider them some of my best friends. Uh, most of my friends, however, are conservative, like myself. Um, I do voiceover for a living. And uh, I do celebrity impressions. Uh, everyone, everyone from uh, well, 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 uh, 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 Jimmy Stewart. What, what is that thing? What do they call that? Oh, it's beautiful. It's a mushroom cloud. I, I, I forgot that. And people like, well, there you go again, Ronald Reagan, all the way to uh, Good Morning, Clarice. I love your shoes. You know, people like Anthony Hopkins. Uh, people like, uh, oh, let's see. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Look out now. Elvis Presley. Uh, I do about 50 or 60 different celebrity impressions. Um, people like uh, Sean Connery. Uh, good morning, Money Penny. I trust you slept well. Are the stars stars, Highlander? Or are they just pinholes in the curtain of night? You're an immortal, Connor McLeod. Get used to it. Stuff like that. I have fun. I entertain my kid. That's important. And I make a good amount of money doing voiceovers in uh, uh, video games and um, some cartoon work, commercials, and audiobooks. And I love it. It's just a lot of fun. I also write. I just wrote my first book, my first book and published it on Amazon. It's uh, called The Little Treasures Collection. So go pick it up. I think it's $1.99 right now or $2.99. But uh, it's uh, basically a humorous journey uh, about me and my son and autism. It's, it's, just, it's not another autism book. It's not trying to cure autism. It's basically showing people how to live with autism using humor, heart, and, and hope. And... Um, it's getting a lot of good reviews, all five gold stars. You gotta get your five gold stars. It's very important. Um, let me have a sip of my coffee here. Oh, Central Intelligence Agency, how did that get in there? Uh, let me get the right cup. Uh, is that the right cup? Yes, Marine Corps Force Recon. That is where, that's how you wanna drink your coffee in the morning. And that is Field Strength Marine Corps Coffee. That will put hair on your chest and it will uh, 
make you grow a beard on your butt cheeks from the inside out. Um, what we're here to talk about today in Conservative Corner, oh, and by the way, you probably see my guitars and different things behind me. I'm a lifelong musician. Um, I actually toured with Sammy Hagar briefly as a fill-in guitarist in 1999. Um, I had long hair, believe it or not, and I wore leather pants. And I will never live that down, ever. Uh, there's my Les Paul, Gold Top, there's my cello. I've got, I got about 30 guitars here in my little studio. I've got drums to my right, a beautiful pearl set. I've got a grand piano. I play guitar, bass, drums, uh, cello, violin, piano, banjo, mandolin. I sing, I sing harmony. And uh, music is a big part of my life, always has been. And I just love it. Uh, what I want to talk to you guys today about and what this, what this show is all about, Fred Dodger is, of course, um, it's a, it's a play on, uh, Fred Rogers name from, uh, Mr. Rogers neighborhood. So, uh, I want to give conservatives, true conservatives, a voice and proud gun owners, legal gun owners, people that don't break the law. We need a voice. No one speaks for us, my friends. Nobody. The liberal media has a field day with us every day of the week. We are painted as criminals because we own guns. And I believe the agenda of people like Hillary Cankles Clinton, yes, I called her Cankles Clinton. Come on, people, she has Cankles. Um, Hillary and uh, Barack Obama, people of that ilk, they want to see us follow the Australian, basically the UK rule of law, which is no more guns. We just don't need them. And, you know, government knows best. They know what's best for us. Uh, I think it's funny that it's interesting that we've been uh, allowed to have guns for 240 plus years, uh, whether they were muskets or uh, um, ball loading guns or uh, an M1 in World War I, um, all the way up to the modern day rifles. We've been trusted with weapons for a really long time and all of a sudden, we're just too childlike to have them. The real agenda to any rational thinking person is that when people don't have guns, they're easier to control. Now let's go back to about three years before World War II started in Germany. And Adolf Hitler had the same idea, which was you strip people of all their weapons, they can't really fight back very well. Now, you take someone like myself, another Marine that's highly trained, you take a handful of recon Marines, you take uh, some Navy SEALs, you take some Army Delta Force operators, you take some Air Force combat controllers, some rangers, and, you know, we're trained in other ways too. We can use anything as a weapon. Uh, our hands, a piece of glass, a rock, a board, something with a nail sticking out of it, or a knife. I'm specifically trained with dual-edged weapons, and I'm very good with them. So, I want to talk today about something that just really rubs me the wrong way. Um, the term assault rifle or assault weapon, it's a totally made up term, folks. Okay? Totally made up by the liberal media. There is no such thing as an assault weapon or an assault rifle. It's made up. Okay? I present to you uh, my AR-15. It's my AR-15. There are many like it, but this one is mine. It's all mine. Her name is Christine. I name all my weapons. Because, you know, conservative gun owners, we're, you know, there's something wrong with us. So, oh, we name, we're from Texas too, some of us, so we name our vehicles. So, anyway, there's that. This weapon is the AR-15, the venerable AR-15, in all its glory. Now, here in the Republic of, uh, oh, did I scare the liberals by pointing the gun in the video? Probably. 
Um, go to your safe place. Go to your safe place and you stay there till I tell you to come out. This particular weapon I bought from a local gun dealer in upstate New York. It was a Christmas present to myself last year, 2015. Now, Governor Cuomo, in all his glory, in all his infinite wisdom, and his pandering, he said, we've got to remove all the scary items off of this weapon. All the things that make people go to their safe place. So first off, you can only have five rounds. Okay? This is your typical 5.56 millimeter uh, military round. Okay? Now, the old magazines uh, carried 10, 20, 30. There was even 60 round magazines. They called them the banana clip. Okay? This one holds five. Now we're allowed 10. But right now, I just have a couple of five, uh, five round magazines. Put it into the magazine well, as so. Okay? Now, on my particular AR-15, I have what we call a super sniper scope. Now, what they don't know won't hurt them. It's not illegal, but it's a little unusual. But I'm free to have whatever kind of optics I want on this. So screw you, Cuomo. Uh, the, uh, we're not allowed to have uh, retractable or adjustable uh, buttstock. Okay? Because that's also scary. And it makes people run to their safe place. When they see that stock that's collapsible... It makes them think of like a bad movie with Bruce Willis. And they go to their safe place. And, and, and then when we take it away, then they'll come out. But actually, I like this. This is the original M16 style. This is the military version uh, buttstock. It fits beautifully into your shoulder. It's, it's just a beautiful thing. Okay? The barrel itself, this is actually quite a long barrel. Uh, as you can see, the... Flash suppressor has been removed. Actually, it was never installed on this particular barrel. Cuomo said, "We cannot have, um, we cannot have, sorry, we cannot have flash suppressors on the uh, AR-15." And here's why: because the flash suppressor. Uh, diverts gases away when the round is expended out of the barrel. And it suppresses the flash a little bit, maybe 30 or 40 percent. And the reason that Cuomo said no flash suppressor on your AR-15 is because then people, at least they'll know where the fire's coming from. Because, you know, we're all hiding in the bushes ready to shoot you at a moment's notice. So we can't, you don't want to have a flash suppressor. You don't want to see where the, where the shot's coming from. More insane thinking from the brain trust that is liberal New York. Okay, hand guard. I just like the way this looks and feels. It's a beautiful thing. It's a uh, knurled metal. It's beautiful. Uh, Three-way selector switch. I'll turn it upside down so you can get a good look at this. This is the selector switch, the famous three-way selector switch. Now, on an AR-15, this is only going to have a two-way selector switch. So, any gun you buy in Walmart or a gun store, okay, or online, is going to have safe, which means you can't pull the trigger, or it's going to say semi, okay? When it's on semi, I can pull the trigger. Each time I pull the trigger, one round is fired. Okay, let's get that straight. All right? There's no automatic weapon. This is simply a civilian version of the military M16. Let's get that into your head. Okay? Now, in the Marine Corps, Army, other militaries... The selector switch has a third selection. It's called full. In the Marine Corps, we call it rock and roll. When you flick that to full, when I squeeze the trigger and hold it in, the gas-operated bolt keeps flop, flip, flopping back and forth and loading new rounds in because of the gas. The gas powers it, okay? 
the blowback operation. And this particular weapon, if it's in full automatic mode or rock and roll, it can fire 860 rounds, 870 rounds a minute. Now that's pretty mind blowing. So you can imagine the power that one Marine or one soldier has with this weapon if it's able to fire full rock and roll. But so you understand the liberal media doesn't want to talk about things like this, but this is a semi-automatic weapon, just like a handgun that's semi-automatic or a deer rifle. It's one pull of the trigger, one round is fired. It's not da 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 da. It's boom do 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 do. Okay. Personally, being a highly trained, you know, former Marine, I can probably get off a hundred well placed rounds with just my finger. Okay, pretty tight grouping in a minute, but why would I waste that much ammo? Uh, I'm a sniper. I think like a sniper. And therefore, I shoot like a sniper. Okay, it's one round. It's one shot, one kill. Okay, now let's talk about something else that Cuomo took away from us. When I took delivery of my weapon last December, I noticed something was missing. Oh my goodness. The other super scary part that makes liberals and hippies run. It's the, the much maligned and hated pistol grip. Look at that. It's so dangerous. I mean, I could hit you over the head with this. I could put your eye out with that. Look. It's horrible. Yes, Cuomo said no pistol grips because that makes this weapon ultra scary. Okay? So instead, he gave us this neutered, neutered is the correct term, a uh, little toy Mattel thing. It's about an inch and a half long. You can just get your finger around it. Your webbing of your hand goes here. But Cuomo, you, you failed. Complete failure. Um, this weapon is still as dangerous as it was when it rolled off the assembly line. It's just as dangerous as it was when it had a full uh, larger magazine and a full pistol grip. All you did was try to make it look less scary for some reason. Uh, it never was an issue before, but it was an issue after certain people got killed at a certain school. And some of that's still up, up in the air as well. That's a whole nother video, folks. And there's some facts about the Connecticut shootings that I think will make you go, hmm? So anyway, this is the AR-15. Now, this is the civilian version uh, de designed by a genius that worked at the Armalite factory in 1956 by the name of Eugene Gene Stoner. And Gene Stoner developed the AR-10 Actually, there were some other, there were AR-3, AR-7, AR-9. AR-10 was the first real prototype. It looked very much like this. The hand guards were different. The barrel was shorter, okay? This is a 20-inch barrel. His barrel was 16 and a half inches. There was no scope on it. It just had iron sights, okay? Had a flash suppressor on the end of the barrel, like it should. And it had a of course a larger capacity magazine, full hand grip, pistol grip, right? And it carried different rounds, okay? Here's the difference between the rounds. This is a 223 5.56. This is the gigantic 7.62 millimeter. This is what the AR-15 originally fired. Now, the U.S. Army said, we like your black plastic rifle. That's what they called it, actually. But we're going to pass on it for now. So the Dutch Army picked it up and ran with it until 1960. They loved it. They still do. So the U.S. Army got jealous. And they said, we want our AR-15 back. And they said, with one caveat. And Gene said, I'm listening. We want you to make it in the smaller caliber so our soldiers can carry more ammo, okay, plus it'll be cheaper. He said, fine. So he went into the factory, Armalite factory, and came up with the 5.56 millimeter NATO round. 
or as hunters would know it as the .223 Remington, .223 caliber, same thing. Now, uh, if the New York Safe Act ever gets repealed, I get to put my regular scary, scary hand grip back on, and I can put a retractable stock on here if I want to, but maybe I don't want to. Now, my other, and remember, it's not an assault rifle. That was my main point, my main point. This is, uh, this is my baby. This is my sniper system. There are many like it, but this one is mine. Now, this is a bolt action. Okay, you pull back the bolt and you put your round in here. Okay, I'm not gonna load it, but you'll slip your round in. This is a 30 6 caliber. It's a very powerful, very powerful round. Okay, and then you are ready for bear or a human, whichever. This weapon was uh, actually the Marine Corps' favorite sniper system during the Korean War and the beginnings of the Vietnam War. Um, Marine Gunnery Sergeant Carlos Hathcock had, I believe, 309 or 311 confirmed kills uh, Viet Cong with a rifle almost exactly like this, except his was painted uh, olive drab green or OD green. Even the scope was painted green. And it shot 30 at six, and he loved it. It was a Winchester Model 70. And he was deadly accurate. Uh, he made the famous shot, I believe in 1967, uh, in a valley where there was a Viet Cong counter sniper who had been uh, stalking him and his Marine spotter for three days. Carlos got tired of it. He said, I'm tired of running from this guy, and we're running in circles. And uh, he waited and waited and waited one morning until he saw the glint off of the end of the Vietnamese counter sniper's uh, scope. And he lined up and fired where he saw the glint. When they found the Vietnamese counter sniper's body, Carlos had shot directly through the center of the scope and the 30 6 round came through the other end of the scope and went right through the guy's eye, out the back of his head, and ruined his afternoon. That's what a Marine Corps scout sniper can do when properly armed and trained. And we are. Now, <clears throat> uh, it got so bad for the Viet Cong that they started putting out bounties and contracts on Marine snipers. That's how good we were, and that's where the term one shot, one kill came from. So now you know the history of the AR-15, the sniper rifle, uh, and you also know that there's no such thing as an assault weapon or an assault rifle, that it's all just made up hokum by the liberal media. And so now, I'm going to put on my cowboy hat, because I can, because I'm from Texas. And I'm probably going to go play drums, or piano, or maybe guitar, I'm not sure. But thank you for joining me in the conservative corner, and I will see you down the road.